This whiteboard video is part of the series on the diagnosis and management of common complications of cancer treatment. The topic of discussion today will be febrile neutropenia. By the end of the video, you should understand the following objectives. Pause the video now to review them. The immune system is our body's natural defense system, which defends against foreign invaders such as bacteria and viruses. An important component to the immune system is the neutrophil. Neutrophils usually account for 50 to 70 percent of our white blood cells, and they protect us against bacterial infections. When the neutrophil count is depleted, it is termed neutropenia. In cancer patients, neutropenia can occur due to myelosuppression of the bone marrow from chemotherapy. It can also occur due to direct infiltration of the bone marrow from cancers such as leukemia and myeloma. Due to the blunted response of the immune system, fever may be the first or only sign of infection. An episode of febrile neutropenia is considered a medical emergency, which is why it's important to recognize. To diagnose febrile neutropenia, it is first important to appreciate some definitions. The definition of fever, according to the Infectious Disease Society of America, is a single oral temperature greater than 38.3 degrees Celsius or a temperature greater than 38 degrees Celsius over one hour. The definition of neutropenia is an absolute neutrophil count less than 0.5 times 10 to the 9th cells per liter. As the name implies, febrile neutropenia is when a patient meets both criteria. A patient might not have any other signs or symptoms of a localizing infection, so it is essential that the clinician do their due diligence to investigate the cause. Now, in terms of management, most, if not all, hospitals will have treatment protocols in place. As such, treatment algorithms will likely vary, but the general principles of treatment remain the same. First, empiric broad-spectrum antibiotics should be started as soon as possible. It is important to have good gram-positive and gram-negative coverage with the antibiotic. Even when the pathogen is known, it is important to continue the broad-spectrum coverage in case there are also other potential pathogens. The diagnostic evaluation should also be completed as soon as possible and will likely happen concurrently with the initiation of treatment. This concludes our discussion on the diagnosis and management of febrile neutropenia. For further information, please visit learnoncology.ca. Thanks for watching.